to take so their plan and intent as Thessalonians when Thessalonians says until he who is uh, is taken out of the way is taken out of the way they had to in essence take um the throne of David the significance of the Solomonic dynasty especially in its manifestation in the 20th century out of the way and um with uh, that careless generation of um, Ethiopians, even many of them were victims of this whole um, mystery of iniquity that was at work. You know, you can call it Illuminati, you can call it New World Order, the bankers, you know, um, the globalists, uh, the Club of Rome, the, the Vatican, Nicolaitans, priests, you know, you can go on different, you can, you can, break them down into different groups, but if you want to see it like full spectrum, the overall, we, um, we uh, beg you to consider what the scripture says, mystery of iniquity, when you understand what that iniquity is, a rebellion, and it's a rebellion against God, and rebellion against the Almighty's order. Remember, Lucifer did not want to bow to Adam, and Adam, in that sense, was the God-man, he was the son of God. He was he was that one who was supposed to be like Earth's rightful ruler, right? And Satan, or, or the one who became Satan, originally Lucifer did not want to bow to him because he felt he was superior. So you can see how when it, when the Kibra Neges says the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik says that that Satan cast his enmity, uh, or cast his 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 envy upon um. Cain, and through that, Cain slew Abel. So we see um, that the devil or Satan is about stealing, right, killing, and destroying. But the Son of God, right, and those who are in the Son of God are about life. And this is how you basically can know them. Those who are about life, those who worship the living God, and those who worship the dead God. Those who worship Christ in spirit and in truth, that means that that from that root they bear fruit, right? And truly his majesty has borne and continues to bear fruit in spite of what this evil and wicked world has said about him. But this is the this is a jubilee year. In fact, when I was going over that particular um teaching and that study there on Ethiopia, United Nations, um and also touching on, uh, I think, Donnell, I think the book of Daniel, um, is where I came across um, that part about oh, 1963. Something about the year 1963 was kind of standing out. And I didn't really perceive exactly why until I had um, um, watched the program on InfoWars, the, the one with... Uh, the one with um, um, the black um, genocide.org, Reverend Childress and his um, and his uh, um, Maafa, the Maafa documentary, and David Ortiz's, you know, David Ortiz's uh, uh, dealing with that, you know, in the interview and everything. And then he mentioned that he says that this is a jubilee year. I said, no wonder this year is. You know, that message of Jubilee, in fact, even in the Torah portion, readings and feeding, we've been touching on Jubilee. You know, I mean, as one of the themes, the, the 49th year, the 50th year, the, the Shimta, you know, the Shimta, the year of release, where all debts are released. Now, what's interesting, if that was practiced in um, the so-called global economy, Right, with all this religious and Catholic and churchical kind of influence and Jews and everything who are in the position that if they were faithful and they practice a shimita where all debts were released, right? This doesn't mean that the profits that one has that they do not have those profits, even though some of it may have been ill gotten, but let's just say that all debts are released. Can you imagine the boost in the world economy, the global economy? But as James says, that um, woe to the rich are those who are not rich in God but are rich in flesh and material, right? Because of how they hoard these things, in a, you know, they heap up riches in, in, in a day of slaughter. 
right, in a time when there is such death and destruction and ungodliness going on. But the good news is 2013 is uh, Jubilee, and we do the math from 1863. And the Emancipation Proclamation can be seen, even though emancipate means to free from the hand, right? So that symbolic act, right, and the hopes of the diaspora, right, black Israel, or the, or the so-called Negroes, the Hebrews, the Ethiopians, the Ethiopian Hebrews, the black people in America, the hopes that they had from that time straight to, we get to even 1963, on the next level, see, what um, Reverend Childress and other black African Americans, of course, are going to, uh, if they're knowledgeable, right, and they keep these things in mind, they're going to speak about, you know, with the Civil Rights, the Voting Act, with Martin um, um, Luther King Jr., and those events, which also culminated in 1963 as well. So it's kind of very interesting that His Majesty would give this speech that would, oh, it's actually Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 3, I think, um, chapter 3, around verse uh, 6, 7, you know, I think around verse, yeah, around 5, 6, or 7, when you get right, right around those verses where it connects with Ethiopia, um, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, he would turn to the people of pure language, but it says that his determination is to gather the nations. Now, when you see Ethiopia's role, right, as Ethiopia emerged after, you know, a, you could say asleep, you know, during the time it was written by many different writers, um, d during the, the, the time of his imperial majesty, the visitation, it was written that he, um, or that Ethiopia, in a sense, Ethiopia was like sleeping beauty in that sense, and his majesty was like that prince, Right, Rastafari, and if you read in the Proverbs, it says that he will kiss the lips of those who speak rightly, like righteously, who speak truly, and so through His Majesty speaking, right, and through His word, sound, and power, and the reality that Rastafari manifests, you know, Christ in His kingly character, that Ethiopia was waking up, you know, and 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 reemerging you know, taking her proper role in this particular, um, during the 20th century. That's why His Majesty is the man of the millennium. And it's a very good documentary, you know, the man of the millennium as well to check out. So this will be the fourth jubilee in that sense, right? Because we have 1863, right, to uh, 1913, uh, then we have 1913 to uh, 1963, and then we have 1963, right, to um, 2013, and so that's this year. So it's interesting that from an African-American or the blacks in the diaspora perspective, you can calculate it as a jubilee, right, um, from the civil rights kind of movement, but then in Rastafari from the human rights movement, right, we see the role of his majesty, and we also see those dates. Those dates are very prophetic, like 1948, and the state of Israel was very prophetic for the Ethiopian Hebrews and black people over here who were, who were conscious and not ashamed of, of Ethiopia, made that link and that connection. So, this is the Jubilee year. I'm going to do a little more study up on it, but definitely the year of release is so important because it's not just uh, a party in that sense. There's an action that, that, that must accompany that, you know, to be within that consciousness because um, imagine that because so many shimitas in America, which basically has a biblical, you know, the Bible and Christianity is in her foundings, you know, one way or the other, that there was never that year of release. You see what I'm saying? Even the releasing of debts, because the Babylonian system is one of usury, right? And usury is contrary to Jah's law, 
right? Especially for I and I as Hebrews, Israel, and even for the righteous among the Gentiles. So that year of release, if we look at it, the Shemitah in economic sense, it would make sense that, I mean, that's just another way to to prove whether these people, these these ones who have, um, you know, made a deal with the devil, whether they are willing to repent. You know, that's what we must be about that, you know, that that gospel, that good news message, which at that level, even for um, the men and people who are caught up in, in, in Satan's uh, last stand or attempt to stand, because this is the last time for... But this is the last time. It's definitely the last time, one way or the other. You can really tell that by prophecy. It's not to say, well, what day and time it's going to happen by, but it's very clear that it's the last time. 